This is the first of five parts of a tutorial on how to construct an image for thin lenses and mirrors using ray construction. So I have here thin lenses. In both cases I have parallel incident rays. That is, I have light coming from the left side that is all parallel rays. You can see here that each one of these rays is parallel to the one above it. Now with those parallel incident rays, we have on the right side, in the converging lens, they all come together because of refraction. And so with them all coming together, we define a single point that is labeled here as F. And the single point is the principal focal point. It's not the only focal point. We will define also a secondary focal point that is symmetric to that on the other side. So if I take this distance, we call the distance here the focal length. We use a lowercase f to indicate the focal length, a capital F for the focal point. And if I go back in the other direction, that same distance, then I'm going to have a symmetric focal point on the other side. And I tried to make these the same distance. So that symmetric focal point would be somewhere around here. And I will label that as an F prime, and that's the secondary focal point. So parallel rays meet at the primary focal point. Parallel incident rays, after going through a lens, meet at the primary focal point or the principal focal point. Because light works the same forward and backward, if I had parallel rays leaving, so I will draw parallel rays leaving here. So if I have parallel rays going like this, those rays would project backward so that they all meet. Oops, last one was not right. So they all meet at the secondary focal point. So that's what the purpose of the secondary focal point is. It is where parallel exit rays would have all met before they got to the lens. Now, if we look in the left picture for the diverging lens, we see with the diverging lens that the parallel rays diverge, once again, because of refraction. But if I extrapolate these back, so let me change to blue just so it matches. If I extrapolate these back, the extrapolations meet at one location, and that's, once again, the principal focal point. Now, keeping in mind terminology we've already learned, this here is a virtual focal point because the rays don't really meet there. But parallel rays diverge as if they came from that virtual principal focal point. And just like with converging lens, we define a secondary focal length that is once again going to be that same focal length but on the other side. And so we would have here the secondary focal point. So for both a diverging lens and a converging lens, we have a principal focal point and a secondary focal point. The principal focal point is where parallel incident rays meet. The secondary focal point is where parallel exit rays would have met before going through the lens. So a key thing to, work, to use when we're dealing with these is the knowledge that light works the same forward and backward and parallel incident rays pass through the primary focal point F. Parallel exit rays 
passed through the secondary focal point f prime. And for a converging lens, you have a real principal focal point. For a diverging lens, you have an, a virtual principal focal point. That goes along with the focal length for diverging lens is negative. Whereas the focal length for a converging lens is positive. So that's the rules for lenses. Now if we go to mirrors, for the mirrors, if I have parallel incident rays and I have a concave mirror, those rays following the law of reflections, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, come back and meet at one point. What should we call that one point? Exactly. We should call it the principal focal point. Now, if we reverse this, if I had rays that exited parallel, because light works the same forward and backward, I could just change the directions of all these arrows. And that would be the reverse case. And so it turns out the principal focal point is also the secondary focal point. So principal focal point is secondary focal point. Now this concave mirror, because the rays actually met, this is a converging mirror. So a concave mirror is converging. Here's a convex mirror. Parallel rays come in, they spread apart. But as you can see in the figure, the extrapolations of the reflected rays come back to meet at a principal focal point. And just like with the converging, this one's diverging, I shouldn't say one word while I'm writing the other. Just as with the converging mirror, with the diverging mirror, my principal and secondary focal points are the same place. The focal length is negative for diverging, and positive for converging. So I have the same basic rules. Focal length was negative for diverging with a lens, positive for converging. Focal length is negative for a diverging mirror and positive for a converging mirror. So I always talk about things as diverging or converging nature because then it's the same rules whether it's a lens or a mirror. Now let's go and think about the rays we're going to use for construction. So when I am doing ray construction, I'm going to have something like I have a lens. Now when I make a lens, I drew a really sloppy lens because you know what? That's the best I can do. When you're doing this, there are things that you have to do carefully. And the first thing that you really need to do carefully is you need to define your optical axis or your principal axis. And so the principal axis, it's best to do the principal axis before <laughs> you draw the lens. The principal axis is a nice horizontal line that's going through the dead center of your lens or mirror. Then I have my lens or mirror, in this case it's a lens, and I am going to put a vertical line for my lens. Why a vertical line? Because we are using what we call thin lens approximation. The thin lens approximation is that the width of the lens is negligible. So that vertical line represents my thin lens. I have my edges on there showing me that it's a converging lens, but those are really not important to me. What's important is that I have that converging type of lens and I have everything is going to occur at that center line. Now a few more things that I must identify. I need to put on here where the principal focal point is and where the secondary focal point is. 
So I'm just going to count out boxes here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes. And that's my principal focal point. So I'm going to put a capital F there for principal focal point. Now I'm going to put my secondary, the same eight boxes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But this is on the other side of the lens. And that's my secondary focal point. Now keep in mind the distance from the secondary focal point to my lens is the same as the distance of the principal focal point to my lens. And we call that distance the focal length. Now that I have drawn my principal axis, get that in. that goes through what we call the vertex of the lens, the center of the lens. And I have my secondary focal point and my principal focal point. I am now ready to do my image construction. Now for the images, you always are going to make your image a vertical arrow. Why a vertical arrow? Well, it's actually pretty simple. I make it a vertical arrow with its base on the principal axis. Because the base is on the principal axis, the image of the base will also be on the principal axis. I do that so I don't have to do a construction for the bottom side of my object. I don't have to find the bottom side of my image. I just find the top side of my image and then I know the bottom side is going to be directly on the principal axis above or below. So now that I've got that drawn, I need to my, make my rays. This is a ray diagram construction. And for the ray diagram, I'm going to use three rays. And those three rays, I will color code them as magenta, blue, and red. So first, the magenta. My magenta ray is going to be what we call the parallel ray. It's going to start at the tip of my object and go parallel to the principal axis until it hits that center line of my lens. Now that it's hit the center line of my lens, we saw from the previous slide that a parallel incident ray has to refract and go through the principal focal point. So there is my parallel ray. And so I'm going to name this the P ray for the parallel ray. So that's ray number one. Ray number two will be a ray that does just the opposite of what my parallel ray does. What goes in parallel, the instant parallel ray has to come out through the focal point. So if I make a ray that goes from the tip of my object, whoops, forgot to turn on the line, from the tip of my object through the secondary focal point and then hits my lens, it should come out parallel. And so there's my second ray, and this one here, because it went through the secondary focal point, and you know it's not a perfect ray, you can see there, but you do your best. We call this one here the focal ray, or the F ray for short. So the focal ray went from the tip of my object through the secondary focal point to the lens, and then came out parallel. The parallel ray went from the tip of my object parallel to the principal axis and then through the principal focal point. Now you can see I have a place where these meet. The definition of the image is the location where all rays from a single point in the object converge. So I can see my image should be right here. But two lines, they're always going to meet somewhere. We like to, let's say, double check by doing a third ray, a ray that is technically redundant, but if it's wrong, then you know you made a mistake. 
And so that third ray is the ray that we call the vertex ray. It's going to start once again at the tip of the object, go right to the center of the lens, and because this is super thin, we have parallel sides on both sides of the lens, and it's just going to go straight through. So it just keeps going straight. And so there, we can see, yes, indeed, my blue line was just a little off. It was a little below the focal point, or hit the principal axis a little too far away from the lens. And then I wasn't straight here either. Both of those pushed it up. And so we see that I have slightly different convergence for these different rays that I constructed, but they come very close to each other. And so this last ray, because it goes through this point that we call the vertex, we call it the vertex ray or the V-ray. Now the image is going to be the place where all of these rays meet up. And so I once again start at the principal axis and draw a vertical line from the principal axis to where they, where they meet up. And I just kind of chose an average place where all three of them met. So I had three possible locations I could have used for crossings and I chose the center one. And so this has constructed now my image. So this is my image. This here was my object. Now you'll notice that this image is inverted. The object was pointing up, the image is pointing down. So this is an inverted image. We could also talk about the magnification. This one here I drew was four blocks tall. The object was four blocks tall. The image here is one, two, three, almost four, but not quite four. So it's slightly diminished. So we would say here that this was an inverted diminished image. Now one last thing, is it a real or a virtual image? If the rays really meet, then it's a real image. If it's extrapolations of the rays that meet, then it's a virtual image. So in this case they really met, so this is a real image. Now something you need to know. If it is inverted, then it will always be real if you have a single lens or a single mirror. If it is upright, then it will always be virtual. The diminished, well, that can change. So that's our basic way of doing image construction. Now I'm going to follow this up with four separate tutorials, one for a converging type lens, such as this, one for a diverging type lens, one for a converging mirror, and one for a diverging mirror. So I'm going to look at each one separately so you can, when you're doing a problem, look at the one that's appropriate for that problem. So this ends our introduction where we talked about the rays. I'm going to, one last time, write down each of the rays and the definitions of what makes those rays what they are. So I have the parallel ray, parallel. And the parallel ray is a ray that starts at the tip of the object and then it runs parallel to the principal axis until it hits lens or mirror and then it refracts or reflects through principal focal point. So that's our parallel ray, or as I called it, the prey, the P-ray. Okay, our second ray that we did was the focal ray. 
So we have the focal ray, or as I called in my picture above, the F ray. And just as with the parallel ray, it's all rays, it's going to start at the tip of the object. And then it's going to run through the secondary focal point. until it hits the lens or the mirror. And then it's going to refract or reflect parallel to the principal axis. Now notice the focal ray and the parallel ray are exact opposites of each other. That is, the focal ray starts out going through a focal point and then reflects or reflects parallel. The parallel ray starts out parallel to the principal axis and then reflects, refracts or reflects through the principal focal point. The final ray I did, the one that I called my double check ray, was the vertex ray. And the vertex ray, or V-ray, again starts at the tip of the object. But then it just goes straight through the vertex. It doesn't bend at all. It gets to the lens or the mirror and it doesn't refract if it's a lens. For the mirror, it will reflect symmetrically. With mirrors, I haven't shown a mirror yet, but with the mirror it's a little more complicated. But it's a symmetric reflection so that it comes down directly below or above, as the case may be, um, the starting point, the object. So we have those three rays, and we're going to use those three rays for every single ray construction. So this will end our first of the five tutorials.